Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Here today with our second Cabral host call of the weekend, getting into more of our community's questions. Hopefully you tuned in yesterday. If you didn't, that's okay. You can head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast for all of the previous episodes. Uh, Looking forward to getting into, again, another five or six questions here today. All things wellness, weight loss, weight gain, anti-aging, Uh, and so much more to come this year. So uh, without further ado, let's get into more of your questions. Hopefully you know by now uh, what we're here to do on the weekends. Again, answer the community's questions. We're about 10 to 12 weeks behind always getting to your individual question. But for everyday help, head on over to cabralsupportgroup.com and ask your question right there. All right, let's get started. So it looks like Jack is up first. Jack says, hi, Dr. Wall. I was hoping you could recommend where to start when you feel like you're at the end. I have idiopathic bilateral heel pain. That means I can, can't stand for more than 10 minutes without being in agony. Every scan and test I've had comes back healthy and normal other than hormones, which I've since optimized to no effect. I've had over 300 appointments across the world with every possible type of practitioner. Uh, and included 14 surgeries. It has culminated in what my surgeon believes is the world's first surgery, as well as tibial nerve removal. Also, to no effect. I am scheduled for amputation, but I do not believe I've covered much of the holistic world. Where can I go from here? Many thanks. Any help is sincerely appreciated, uh, Jack. Okay, so... I'm happy to answer this. First of all, I just want to share with you, of course, that I'm not here to provide you with any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical diagnosis. But whenever you've done 14 plus surgeries and it is just not working, especially when you remove a nerve, uh, again, yes, there's obviously amputation, but I mean, that is a last resort, right? That's, I mean, that is hoping that this pain goes away by amputating, but sometimes, you know, there is more that goes on and you can look up amputee-based stories and they have phantom, uh, I don't know that this is the, you know, proper way of saying it, but I just, I don't know of another way. So, you know, just excuse me while I do say it. And that is a phantom limb pain where they actually feel pain in the limb that's no longer there. A lot of, uh, people from war who've had amputation still feel that. What I would look into is other, I mean, in my opinion, what I would do for me is I would look into other more natural-based protocols. I would look into everything from cognitive behavioral therapy. I would look into hip hip uh hypnotism. It's I know it's like thinking about stage hypnotism, but not that. What else would I look into? I would look into, you know, trauma-based pain. I would look into chiropractic in terms of like, is there some type of nerve-based impingement? I would look into TENS-based therapy. So this is a really good one. It's not just TENS, but what they do is they actually put electrodes on the area of pain and they overload the nerve-based circuitry so that the nerves actually shut off. They're overloaded. Um, And so this is really interesting. I've done a lot of that. I haven't done that specific work, but I've done a lot of this research and I've done a lot of work in um, kinesiology and physiology where we looked at, um, you know, Golgi tendon, organs and, and overloading that with what's called PNF, which is a proprioceptive, ne- proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. And I did stretching with clients back in the day on all that. So I personally would look into all of these things first. I really would. I would do a detox. I would do fasting to see if it improves on fasting days. If it improves on fasting days, it could be an overall inflammatory based issue. So I, I think that there's there's more to look. I understand it's not easy. I get it. I understand uh, 10 years for me, you know, it took to find my answer, but I'm very happy that I did. I hope it doesn't take you 10 years. And, uh, and there's just much more. Again, I, I was sick in the late 90s. And, uh, you know, we didn't have the information that we have today. Not, not as easily spread. Okay. 
Allie's up next. Hi, doctor. In November of 2021, I started working with an IHP for chronic migraines, elevated fasting glucose, weight gain, and getting up two times a night to urinate. She had me do a three-week detox, CBO mold, and heavy metals. During the CBO protocol, I lost the excess weight and finally started to get less migraines. My sugar started to stabilize. I'm happy to hear that, Ellie. That's great. And yay, IHPs. Uh, now, one year later, my weight is up. Oh, that's not good. Um, and 100 uh, my sugar is above 100, getting headaches, and I'm still getting up two times a night to urinate. I follow the 90-10 rule with diet, yoga three times a week, walk uh, three miles every day, meditate. I do the DNS. Mil uh, magnesium, C, B, complex, omega, zinc daily. What am I missing? Well, it's not what you're missing. Um, you did it. So you, during the CBO protocol, you lost the excess, excess weight and finally started to get rid of the migraines and your sugar stabilized. Okay. So I, again, I don't want to reinvent the wheel right? We already know what worked for you. So that was, I don't know if it was a year ago or so. Um, I mean, we need to go back to the CBO protocol. There obviously was a regrowth of, not obvious, I shouldn't say obvious. That's not true. Uh, there seems to be a regrowth, but again, I'm not giving you medical diagnosis, of bacteria yeast in the intestines. And I personally would do the CBO protocol again, but then making sure you, that you do the CBO finisher, and you watch for what is caught, again, like listen to my show on rotation diet and controlling variables because there is something that you're eating or doing that is causing you to, <coughs> excuse me, that is causing you to swing back in terms of weight and headaches. And it's certainly, I shouldn't say it's certainly, I don't, again, I don't want to give you ultimatums, but it's some type of food. Like there's something going on that is aggravating your body. And so we need to follow back to that sensitive gut guide. I would do a detox first. Doesn't have to be the 21 day, although that would be great. The seven day is okay. Then do the CBO. Let's figure out what is going on and really keep notes on this so that we get it right. And, uh, and that you, you get to maintain these results. That's what we want. That's what we expect, okay? So that's, that's my first place to start. Work with the IHP again. Have them listen to this if they didn't listen to it. And, and then let's, let's keep better track as you ease off as to what your body will tolerate at this moment in time. All right, thank you for writing in. Anonymous is up. Hi, Dr. Wall. What is the best natural or clean ingredient lube, lubrication? I've heard of coconut oil. Do you recommend this or any other brand ingredients? Also curious to get what your take on the new Aura beta staging. I see drastic differences of two or more hours of my deep sleep, for example. Curious if you have a take on any of the research they've released and why this looks so different from my past results. Yeah, happy to answer both of these. So I've actually answered a clean lubrication ingredient before, and it was coconut oil. So that, again, like I could give you all sorts of different ones. Um, jojoba oil, but coconut oil is going to be the easiest. And also... When you think about it, it's naturally antimicrobial and antifungal, so a good choice overall. And so uh, coconut oil, so that's it. Extra virgin, um, organic coconut oil, that's it, and, and you're all set. Okay, so Aura Ring beta staging, yes. So we're talking about the sleep stage. So Aura Ring is going to be making this mandatory in, in weeks from now, but they have your regular sleep, and then they show you it in beta. All right, so what most people are finding is their deep sleep is lower and their REM sleep's a little bit lower. Now, I've said this before, Aura Ring, I believe, corrected the steps. A couple years ago, they used to be at least 10% to 15% greater in terms of steps, and I think it took into account the movement of the hand rather than the movement of the whole body, right? So if I go like this my hand, it shouldn't count as steps. If you're watching some video, I'm just shaking my hand back and forth. Okay, so um, they're correcting now what, what may have been a little bit of an exaggerated deep or REM sleep. Now, if you're saying it's the difference of two or more on your deep sleep, then it was way off in the first place because normal deep sleep is an hour to two hours. You really want to be at the hour and a half time frame. If you were getting like three hours of deep sleep, well, then yours was just way off. Like people are not getting three plus hours of deep sleep. It's just not happening. Um, every once in a while, yes, that is true, but not for the most part, not on a daily basis. Okay, and then um, REM sleep should be at about two hours. So you'll see those drop for most people, like 10 to 20% maybe. Not for all, but they're using a different, uh, more fine-tuned algorithm with the new Gen 3 rings. All right, so they're getting more accurate data, and that's not a bad thing. All right, uh, let's see. 
Luan's up next. Hello, Dr. Paul. You recommend natural Gatorade, which is sea salt and lemon or lime juice and water to replenish electrolytes. That's correct, Luan, I do. I call it my natural Gatorade. Do you recommend an additional electrolyte supplement for athletes, or do you instead recommend they drink additional servings of natural Gatorade? What should we look for? What should we avoid if looking for pre-made electrolyte supplements, such as Noon, uh, concentrate element or relight. Do you have any recommendations? Thank you. Yeah. So um, the reason why I haven't given you a recommendation on an electrolyte drink isn't because I don't believe in them. I do. The thing is this, is that uh, you can't tell me that element is right for every individual because it's at least when it first came out, when I saw it and I tried it, because I try most of these products because I I want to... I want a basis to be able to chat with you about it, right? And it's my field. I want to know what's going on. So it's like a 10 to 1, or was it 10 to 1, from sea salt to potassium. Now, that's great if you're someone that sweats a lot, right? So like if you go in your exercise and your shirt's covered in like white stains from all the salt, uh, then yeah, Element could be great for you. No doubt about it. Relight, a little bit more balance. And so again... They, they can all be good. They really can. You just don't want to overdo one electrolyte as opposed to the other. Meaning like most of these are sodium and potassium. Those are like the two main electrolytes. There's also calcium, magnesium, of course. I mean, there's phosphorus. There's, there's a lot, right? But those are the ones we're looking at. So your body really needs sodium. So that's where the sea salt comes from. But it also needs potassium to balance the sodium. You can't just drive, you know, 5,000 milligrams of sodium into your body like some people think without it pushing down potassium. So most people need some potassium. So um, the sea salt and lemon lime is enough for most people because here's the thing, you can just add more sea salt if you want to taste, right? And your body knows. Um, And you can add more lime if you want. But no, I don't have an issue with any of the electrolytes. I really don't. Um, No issues. Just You have to just find the right one for you based on the sodium to potassium ratio. All right, hopefully that was helpful. All right, we've got a question from Christina. Christina's saying, Hi, Dr. Rawl. Thank you for taking the time to answer my question. I got COVID in April 2022. It was very mild, and I recovered within three days. Then I started experiencing general anxiety and panic attacks. It's been 11 months or eight months of not doing well. If I had to do some tests, which would be the most important ones? Is there any time I can do... Is there any time I can do in the meantime while waiting for the test results to help? I think it said, is there anything I can do in the meantime? Got it. Okay, Christina, let's let's help you out. So yeah, even though you had a mild case in terms of symptom- symptomatology, doesn't mean that you didn't have then the long COVID-based inflammation. And I talk about that. So I would love for you to listen to my free podcast. You can go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. I just want you to scroll through the images at the top, either on mobile or your desktop, and look for latest virus updates. I haven't done one in quite some time, but that doesn't mean that the podcast is not relevant. They're evergreen. And so you can scroll back, and just a few, you'll see the long COVID and all the different items there. And so um, you're right by doing the lab test first, right? So like my protocol for, again, it's not medical advice, for viruses and sicknesses is at stephencabral.com forward slash the dash protocol. And for children's, it's stephencabral.com forward slash children dash protocol. Okay, so that's that. Those are, um, it's free information. You can just look it up. I, I try to open source everything that I do and you know, and you can decide what you feel is best for you or your family. Okay, so this is what I would do. I would run the big five labs. And if you're not able to run the big five labs, then I would do in this order. I would do the starter kit. That's going to be the candida metabolic and vitamins test and then the minerals and metals test to look at all your minerals and metals in your vitamins. <coughs> Excuse me. And so that's what I would do. And then the next one I would do is the stress mood and metabolism. After that would be the inflammation one, the omega-3. Uh, and the very last one would be the food sensitivity. Okay, so that's exactly what I'd do lab-wise. And then I personally would do the... Uh, seven-day functional medicine detox, plus then transitioning to the daily foundational protocol plus the immunity protocol. All of that's available at stephencabral.com forward slash shop. That's just all of my protocols that are there, and you're welcome to look at those again. Um, so that's just general advice, and, and I obviously I hope that that's helpful. All right? 
All right, let's get to one more question today. It's from Audrey. Audrey writes in, Hi, Dr. Ball. I tried giving your liquid omega-3 to my 15-month-old, and she absolutely would not take it. I mix it in smoothie, oatmeal, other foods, etc., and it totally changes the taste of food. Any advice on how I can get her to take it? She used to love salmon and is not a fan, and now, Marge, she's not getting adequate omega-3s. I tried the Nordic Naturals omega-3 gummies, and she won't take those either. Thanks so much. Okay, yeah, so let's um, well, let's first talk about that. So if you're using our liquid omega-3, and it's a 15-month-old child. So you need how much? Like the, honestly, the tip of a teaspoon, if you were deciding to do omega-3s at 15 months old. So that's younger than we gave them to, I don't know if it's younger than we gave them to my daughters. Um, no, it's probably right around that. But we try to get fish, you know, into their diet if possible, but you're using so little. Like, I just want you to know that the serving size for an adult for the liquid omega-3 is one teaspoon. Okay. The serving size for a 75-pound child is a half a teaspoon. For a 30, 35-pound child is a quarter of a teaspoon. So we're going down to 15 months old, regardless of their weight, we're doing like the tip of a teaspoon. So it's such a small amount that maybe you were just doing too much before. And um, then now with that small amount, you could mix it into whatever you chose. And that should dramatically change things. Again, whether you mix it into some applesauce, mix it in a little bit of pomegranate juice, um, all of that should, should be fine. A little bit of um, natural pudding that you make up, fruit, meaning like you can take a strawberry and a banana and you literally just put it in a blender, tiny bit of water or nut milk if you want, and then you turn it into like basically what we always did for my daughters, which we called ice cream. So it's just like cherries and or strawberries and a banana. We just, you know, made that into like a, an ice cream, right? And then you could just add whatever supplements you want right in there. And the omega-3, which is mango-based, I think, I think it would mix right in very, very easily. So hopefully that's helpful. I appreciate everyone tuning in here today. Last show of the week. Going to go rest my voice now to get started, of course, with a brand new week of the Cabral Concept. Don't miss it starting tomorrow on our Mindset and Motivation Monday. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your weekend. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm gonna teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.